Hi, I'm Pierce Jens with Baratza Support. Today I'm going to show you how to change the chassis on your Conical Burr coffee grinder. Let's get to it. The tools we're going to use today are wire cutters, a flathead screwdriver, super glue, pliers, a drill or Phillips screwdriver, and of course the new chassis. Remove the hopper, grounds bin, and the knob on the side. The knob you just pull and wiggle and it slides right off. I like to use the hopper lid as a tray to hold on to the nuts and bolts so I don't lose them while I'm doing the process. Go ahead and pull out the gasket and remove the ring burr. Next we're going to want to remove the case. For the Preciso case we're going to get off the micro adjustment knob first. Place a flathead screwdriver underneath the knob. Inside the grinder push down on the black adjustment ring to steady it. And while you're pushing down gently you can go ahead and pry the knob off with your screwdriver. Once the knob has been removed, we can lay the grinder on its side and get the case off. If you need some more help getting your case off, please watch our YouTube video for case removal. Before we start taking the screws out, I'm going to turn the adjuster ring a little bit clockwise so I can pull the interlock switch off of the white gearbox housing and let it dangle to the rear. We're going to remove the three Phillips screws that hold the white gearbox housing to the chassis. Two of the three screws may have a machine nut on the bottom side. Take care not to lose it. Once these three screws are removed, the gearbox and motor assembly will lift out and you can unplug it from the circuit board. We're going to go ahead and put this assembly to the side. The next easiest thing to take off is going to be the circuit board. There are two Phillips screws, easy to see and get to, that are holding it in. Once these two screws are removed, we can unplug the connector from the circuit board and set the circuit board to the side. If you have an older grinder, you may have a slightly different style of circuit board connector. Just pay attention to how it's connected and put it back together the same way it was when you took it apart. The timer switch must come off next. There's a 5 8 nut holding the timer switch onto the chassis. You can either use a 5 8 socket or simply a pair of pliers. The nut is not on very tight. With the nut removed, we can get the timer switch out. It can be difficult to get out with just your fingers, so I recommend using your flathead screwdriver as a wedge between the switch and the chassis and popping it out. Once the switch is removed from the chassis, we can unplug the two leads going to the back of the switch. It doesn't matter which one goes where when we're putting it back together, so don't worry about that. Before we do the power cord, I'm going to go ahead and remove the base from the unit. Remove the four feet from the bottom of the grinder. As tempting as the two obvious Phillips screws are, they do not hold the base onto the chassis and do not need to be removed. Okay. 
after removing the four feet, remove the screws from underneath. With all four screws removed, we can go ahead and pull the cord through the base and put the base to the side. Next, we need to remove the front pulse button from the chassis. The pulse button is adhered at our factory, but is easy to remove. Take your flathead screwdriver and place it underneath of the pulse button and gently pry upwards. The switch removes it readily, as well as the bracket. Put the bracket in your parts bin and leave the switch attached to the wire harness. Now we are almost done removing the old chassis. The final part to remove is the power cord plug. There are two catches on the power cord plug that you can see I am engaging with the screwdriver. We need to push in one of the two catches while pressing down on the plug. Pressing down will hold the catch pinched against the chassis, keeping it pressed in, allowing us to go to the second catch, pressing in the screwdriver, and then we can work our way back to the first. At this point, the, the power cord plug is at an angle. Both catches are disengaged. And I'm gonna use my screwdriver to press down on it and force it through the hole. Carefully feed the wiring harness through the hole. No need to disconnect anything. We can go ahead and discard the old chassis and get the new part to install. Your new chassis includes two mounting screws. We're gonna take those off first. The mounting screws are included for older grinders that may not have this style of screw on the chassis. With the chassis prepared for installation, go ahead and get your wiring harness and feed it through the bottom. There is no need to unplug any components from the harness. You will be able to work all of them through the hole, plugged in as they are. Once we get to the power plug, go ahead and just press it in and it will clip into position very audibly. Next, I'm gonna reinstall the metal base, feed the cord through the base, and get the base into position on the bottom of the chassis. Once in position, reinsert the four screws. Don't forget to press your feet back into the holes after you have the screws installed. With the new base installed, we can proceed to the timer. In the wiring harness, there are two female spade clips that have nothing plugged into them. These are the two that plug into the back of the timer switch. Orientation is not important, but one does have a slightly longer wire than the other. So try and use your best judgment on which one to plug in where. Press your timer switch through the hole in the chassis and reinstall the keeper nut. This nut does not need to be very tight, just snug. What we are looking to find is the wire that goes from the power cord directly to a micro switch. You can see on this grinder the white wire goes to a connector, whereas the black wire goes directly to a micro switch. The micro switch connected directly to the power cord is a safety switch that sits on top of the gearbox. The other micro switch is going to be our pulse button. Now that we have the two switches identified, put the pulse button micro switch onto the two pegs on the front of the chassis. 
You'll notice that the actual clicking button on the switch is offset. It is more to one side than the other. If you look at the way I have the switch installed currently, the actual button on the micro switch is right in the middle of the grinder. This is good. If we install it the other way, the micro switch is not in the middle of the grinder. This is bad. Grab the bracket for the front pulse button. The bracket is slotted on one side. The slots allow us to push it onto the pegs with the micro switch already in position and then press down to get the two pegs into the holes. At this point we need to very lightly adhere the switch and bracket onto the two pegs. Go ahead and use the tiny drop of glue and then use another little dot at the bottom of the bracket where it attaches to the chassis. Remember, use the glue sparingly. We do not want to get glue inside the switch. Okay, we're ready to put the circuit board back into position. Grab two of your self-tapping screws and reinstall the circuit board. Grab your gearbox motor assembly from earlier. We need to check two things. One, make sure your rear motor mount is in place on the gearbox. And second, make sure that your ground chute gasket is in place as well. Now I'm going to put my finger up through the hole, discharge hole, to guide it into place on the chassis. There are a couple of wire routings we want to pay attention to when installing. First is our rogue micro switch we have. We want it to loop around the motor so when we put the screws in it sits happily on the top without the wires being stretched or pinched. The second thing we need to check are the two wires going to the switch in the front. We want both wires underneath the gearbox to the inside of the screw holes. One wire to the inside of the gearbox, the second wire to the inside of the gearbox. My shoe gasket is in place. My rear mounting grommet is in place. I can go ahead and insert the screws to install. Remember to plug your motor into the circuit board. Position your safety switch on the top. Make sure your clicking ring is as far counterclockwise as it can rotate. We're ready to install the case, but before we do, check that your wire connections are all made, that your motor is plugged in, your interlock switch is in place, and all the wires are routed out of the way so they do not get pinched by the case. Go ahead and set the grinder case onto the shell. Wiggle it around a little bit to get it to seat. Then press it down. You may need to press down very gently at the back of the adjustment ring to get it to pop down into place after the case is snapped back on. The micro adjust button will press into place on the arm. However, it is best to press it on a little bit further by getting a thin, stiff object reaching into the slot and underneath of the arm to press up on it so we can lift up on the micro adjustment arm while pushing down on the knob to get the two to stick together, like so. Reinstall your burr. gasket, 
popper. In. Knob. Now for the lid, you will have two screws left over. I have two machine screws with nut left over. It is much more likely that you will have two shorter self-tapping screws without a nut left over. This is due to the two screws that were included with the new chassis. And now you're good to go.